Was there a, ever like a particular moment when you you heard something or saw someone and said, "Yeah, that's what I want to do"? I mean, was that? Oh, uh, well, I heard I saw Louis Armstrong when I was ten. I think fifty six. See, you're like uh, yeah, fifth grade, and uh, I went backstage and got to meet him and everything. He even um, even uh, showed him my mouthpiece and stuff. He you know he blew his horn, believe it or not. And um, I was walking around, Edmund Hall was the, the clarinet player. Do you know who Edmund Hall is? He was a clarinet player with Duke Ellington. He was playing with Louis Armstrong at the time. And they had, a, I was walking around the thing, I hear I'm like 10 years old, and they're all in their shirt sleeves and everything. Louis Armstrong would let people come into his dressing room, which I could never understand how he could do it after the gig, you know? And Edmund Hall had one of these uh, uh, flight bags, one of the first flight bags you've ever seen, these little blue kind of, uh, flight bags and he had a whiskey bottle sticking out of it. It was like uh, some white label, some kind of Scotch Canadian club or something. And I was just watching everybody hang around and having a taste and they're doing it, you know, it's like, this is life for me. I was 10. <laughs> it was good growing up there because of lack of peer pressure. There wasn't anybody else. And so I didn't have to, somebody said, well, you got to hear this guy, he's hip. Because, you know, I, it's, I naturally gravitated, I think, to the better people. Because uh, I could, you can, you know, the, the best people can, uh, um, um, like, you can, you can feel it. The jazz life is, uh, is a little more than just whiskey bottles and flight bags. It can be, it can be kind of a hard road. Do you, do you ever have any regrets, or do you feel oh, like no, this Oh, no, no, I have no regrets on that. You know, it's, it's, it's a... Uh, but there, it's, I was lucky that there was still a jazz wife. You know, I think I came in on the end of that. You know, there's not so many. There's probably the same. There were six people working then, all the time. There probably still still is. But now with the media thing, like a guy like uh, I, I was talking to, to Steve Johns, who was working with Sonic Fortune for a few years, and he worked all the time. You could survive. You could live on that one gig. You know, just like when I played with Mingus and these people. But the thing is, it's like. The media is always looking for some new kid or some new something to hype up for a minute, and then uh, the people that are there, uh, they don't get uh, the the, uh, uh, the hype so much. Even Mingus didn't at the time. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of uh, some people. You know. Can you speak to the sacrifices that you may have had to make to, to live this life? Or? Um. Well, let's see. I don't know. Yeah. It's. I mean. I don't know if it's sacrifices because it's something that's not really a choice. It's like it's like a priest or or, or, a, or a rabbi or something that kind of chooses you. You get a calling. You know what I mean? And um, some people I know they had the calling and then they went and became lawyers. For example, like Peter Roca, you know, was doing kind of okay, I guess, but I mean, probably not really. I mean, he had records out, and you know, but then he became a lawyer. But then uh, they come back too, you know, so it's like a calling, it's not like, I don't know if it's a sacrifice, I don't think of it as a sacrifice, because, you know, the thing about being a musician is like, no matter if you have nothing, and you're in your room, and the light bulb is hanging down, and the plaster's peeling off the wall, and the water's dripping in the sink and making that red, or that rusty stain in the sink, and, and you know, and, and the, the, there's no air conditioning and it's 100 degrees and the window's open and you're sitting on a rickety chair. When you take your horn out, everything is okay. So I don't know how many people actually have that. You know, even people with millions of dollars, some often don't seem to be very happy. You know what I mean? But all is right with the world when you're playing the blues. <laughs> and that's free. <laughs>